Thank you very much for coming to our exchange meeting on the value of China Census as Delta and Delta demonstration today. I'm Feng Qi, the host today. I'm currently the Deputy General Manager of the uh, International Department of CNKI, mainly for responsible for marketing and participating in product planning. Population Delta is of great significance to the population management of a country or region, the formulation of various policies. So China will hold a national census every 10 years. So how to make full use of these value delta to support our scientific research? What value can these delta bring to our research? How can we find these delta accurately and efficiently? Today, I have invited two guests, Ren Qiang from uh, Peking University and Yang Xiaowei, a manager from Xinkai. Their report will give a detailed explanation of the above uh, issues. We also welcome you to have some common discussions and questions after this speech. Ren Qiang is a doctor of demography, a demography, a permanent associate professor and deputy director of the a social Research Center of Peking University and the Deputy Director of China Social Science Survey Center of Peking University. Ren has a very rich international research background and experience in transnational exchange and cooperation. He has successfully worked at the Mark Planck Institute of Democracy in Germany. He has been a visiting scholar at Duke University Medical Center and the Popular Research Center of the University of Michigan. Uh, and he won the American Academy of Pediatrics Distinguished uh, uh, Achievement Award in 2003 for his uh, pioneering research in child health. His main research include population uh, resources, environment, uh, economic resource, environment, economics, population, population anal analysis method. He's very familiar with the census delta and has uh, many opinions. Uh, today, let's follow the experts to have a good understanding of the value and application of China Census Delta. Now, let's invite Mr. Yuan to explain the value of Census Delta for us. Hello, uh, all the online friends. Today, I'm honored to be invited by CNKI to share with you uh, some of, of my experience and the feeling about the use of census delta. My research is mainly focused on uh, demography, so the census is also one of the delta I often use. I'm very happy to be invited by CNKI today to communicate with you uh, because it has such a good delta platform. I think it is very useful uh, Delta platform so for scholars and students from all over the world. So today, I'm going to give you a brief introduction of the history of the census and what the census is used for and how it is used in the fields of demography. So I'm going to give you some examples of the application in some areas that I know, as we all know, our country has conducted seven census plus four small census. From here, we can see that although China's census began in 1953, the real modern census began in 1982. Before the reform and opening up, the population delta as a highly confidential document of our country was little known to the outside world. Therefore, in more than 30 years since the founding of the PRC, our country has experienced a series of natural disasters and political events. Uh, at the same time, what happened in the international community in 1960s and 1970s? If you look, look back, you may know that what everyone discussed at the same time the population had brought very heavy pressure to the earth and the ecological environment. Uh, and 
What happened to our country's population in the, in the same period? What happened to the main family structure? What happened to the age of the population?、Uh, the international and domestic society are very concerned about it, and they all hope to urgently to understand what kind of population situation China is, and what role it, it will play in population explosion that international community is generally concerned about. So our country is going to carry out the first population census,、uh, in 1982. This census can be said to be a truly international,、uh, co cooperative consensus. This census has received、uh, great support from international organizations such as the、U、UN Population Fund, scholar from various countries and universities in the U.S. in terms of fund and e equipment. Therefore, the 1982 census was a very successful survey, del, del,、uh, survey de delta. The quality error of the post census may be only、uh, about 1.8 percent, which is very rare in the world. Therefore, after the completion of the census, a series of studies have been carried out in academic circles, and a more comprehensive understanding of Chinese population development have been gained. Uh, our country has fully recognized the importance of the census. So later, the form of legislation stimulates that we should conduct the census at the age of.、Uh, we should conduct a small、uh, census of population. The reason why it is called a small. Uh, census is that everyone knows that census is conducted in. Ten year every ten years. In fact, the the time interval between the bureau is still relatively long, so that we conduct a small census every ten years. In the past forty years, China has not only made great achievements、uh, in the economy,、uh, but also made great changes in social structure, population structure, marriage, family education, fertility level mode. And health level mode. The international academic community is bound to pay more attention to China's social phenomenon carried out to various studies. So we say that uh, census, uh, population census, must be a very popular basic data. So, what are the usage of census? We say that. The use is roughly based on my research and understanding, and there are roughly five aspects of、uh, understanding. First of all, of course, I we use the census to carry out a series of、uh, population studies, such as population structure, marriage, housing, education, occupational migration, especially population migration. Many using the information sensors to carry out this role. On the other hand, we think since the census is the census of the whole population, it is different from simple sensors, so it can be used as independent variables or a control variable with、uh, abstract surveil delta in. In the analysis, we all know that as our social science, we often study people's behavior. People's behavior is、uh, influenced by their family community. We think that people live in a common family, common com community, and they must have a common behavior constraints. So we often use the census as the supplement to sample survey delta, and as a control for environmental、uh, variables. There's another kind of usage, which means that we can we say that the census can be used as a, a sub sub item of some of our indicators. We often have a lot of delta in the public of、uh, public health. Such as the incidence of the disease, the number of people suffering from certain disease, etc. But 
he does not have the population delta we gave him. So we can combine these events with census delta to calculate the incident of uh, indicators. We often uh, carry some population sample survey delta, so the survey delta and sample survey delta may have more or less various deviations, such as design deviation, response rate deviation, housing rate. The census as supplement to uh, sampling survey is very useful delta as post-weighting. Then there's another kind of use that is as a public product. The census as a public product is very good sampling framework for us to carry out sampling surveys. So every time we have the information of age structure, gender structure, education structure, we can do a very good scientific sampling survey on this base. First of all, it can be a very good sampling framework to use. For the census, its, it's content is very limited. Compared to the sampling survey we usually carry out, its content is much less. There are several basic information it, it must have, such as the relationship between family members, uh, as well as housing information, migration information, birthplace, in recent years, some self-exposure health conditions have been added in, uh, in some years. There are uh, some basic demographic information, such as age, gender, race, education, occupation, etc. For China's census delta, there are two aspects that are relatively unique and designed because our because of our usual delta is very relatively limited in China. It attaches a great importance to the issue of fertility in the process of carrying family uh, planning. Uh, therefore, we have increased the, the survey of fertility in various uh, in the previous census. There is another special thing that is different from the census of the other country, that is the death survey. Because of our country's death surveys do have civil, civil registration, these data are, very, are not very convenient for people to use. So our currently uh, estimated life expectancy and health status uh, it's many collects the population information of death in each family in the years before the consensus, which are the two aspects that distinguish our country's uh, census from the other country's census. So, so how do we use the census delta? We will study the structure and the growth of population. We will use, for example, uh, we have an article. We will look at Chinese population uh, has developed this use of delta uh, you can clearly uh, see from the age of the period of population from 1982 to 2010 nearly 30 years great changes have taken place in china's population structure it went from a positively positive pyramid shape to a plot even a little bit and then to a pyramid situation so this is why we say that in the past 30 years, China's population has aged rapidly. That is, the young population is getting less and less, and the proportion of elderly population is getting more and more. That is to say, although during our four population arrangements in our uh, country from 1982 to 2010, although population is aging, uh, we can see that the changes in the academic qualification of our human resources and educated people are very also very significant. 
That is to say, in the past thirty years, the proportion of people have received high school education or university education has been increasing, especially young people. We can also judge the growth of a population from age structure of population and make a comparison with the change in the degree of age and use. We say that it is a very good population base for the whole country, and we can make a population a census forecast, which may play an important role, because the population forecast of the census may be a very good base or baseline of the two years. Then, this year you need to have a、uh, basic information. About the sex structure, age structure of a population, and then, as time goes on, the life interest、uh, rate changes, mortality rate changes, the migration changes.、Uh, so, every census is the very good basis for us to make population projection. For example, if we Imitate the prediction of China's population. We will judge that the change will take place in China's population in the next fifty years on the basis of the population in two thousand. You can see a very interesting phenomenon because after two thousand census, we have a birth level of China's population, so people are very confused. Whether it is true or false, the delta is not accurate. There are various judges. You can see that the population under the age of ten in the census of two thousand is very uncertain. Whether the population is small in the innermost line of defense or a little more in the outermost line of defense, we. Estimate that according to the level of the whole business judged by the scholars, we estimate that the population may change uncertainly in the range. But you can see that this level of un a, bit, a little bit uncertainty will bring uncertainty to to China's population structure after fifty. Whether. The population belongs to the innermost population structure. Our outside population structure has a great impact on the development of society and the planning of infrastructure. That is aspect of the、um, of the application. Then there is another aspect of application on family structure. For example, Professor Li Ping of Renmin University has done the study. He used the delta of four sensors. And a sample survey to estimate the change in family structure in China in the past thirty-five years. You can see that this big delta has changed a lot in the past thirty、uh, years in China. It has changed from a relatively high proportion to a very low proportion. So now it is many、uh, small families. Therefore, census is very. Is a very useful delta for studying the way families live, the intergeneral relationship of family, and there is also research on education. There is、um, an article that used delta from our center from nineteen eighty two to twenty. Ten to study the change of education in China, you can see from the census delta back to the birth、uh, cohort in China around nineteen o o. Their population has changed a lot in terms of education. In the past eighty to ninety years, the average length of education has been from a low level. To about ten、uh, years, which is very impressive. You can see both men and women are growing rapidly, especially women's education level, which has increased very rapidly in the past few decades. Basically, in recent years, women's education level has been the same as that of men. If you look at the situation of higher education, women even surpass men. So that is to say, the census is very、uh, useful delta 
for、uh, the historical changes. As you can see, we also talk about the, the occupational segregation or income status, which can also be used in the census. We do not collect information, uh, income information in census, but Chinese census tries to collect income information in two thousand and two thousand five. Later, because there are a lot of other example. Samples of a delta for everyone to use. There was no information to increase income, so you can see Wu Xiaogang and his research wanted to compare the income difference between hundreds of millions of people and local residents in cities and towns, because in the past we all know the biggest population phenomenon in China was the flow of urban. And rural population. So we now estimate there are about four hundred million labor、uh, force in this situation of rural labor flow. Let's judge that our rural population now accounts for about fifty five percent. So if you think about the total、uh, labor force, it is more than six hundred million people. Less than six hundred million people, and four hundred million of them are in the flow. Uh, situation. So this phenomenon is the largest population phenomenon in China. So many people are in the process of mobility because the boundary between urban and rural areas of our social welfare household registration is still very obvious, and there is a gap in all aspects of income. So from the first table above, you can see the income of hundreds of millions of people from rural. Areas to cities is basically lower than that of local residents in cities and towns.、Uh, whether it is government departments,、uh, enterprises, or private sector, the entire sample is relatively low. If we assume the floating population. Uh, of one hundred billion people from rural and、uh, rural areas and urban residents, if they are the same in terms of culture, education, skills, what will be the situation? That is the following table means. That is to say, it carries out some statistical control. If we assume that everyone has the same years of education, the、uh, same work experience,、uh, what is the difference in the income? The floating population actually gets a good return in the process of mobility. Only the migrant population in the government sector has a, a lower income than the local population, while、uh, others in the private sector、uh, have a better income than the local population. So we say that migration actually brings very good returns to rural population. There is another application about the health, because we say that this example is a public、uh, health delta we usually use various causes of death and other delta、uh, and gender difference we combine with the census、uh, population.、Uh, that is to say, the increase in life expectancy. The difference between men and women are caused by which type of disease? Uh, which age of uh, group? Uh, so this is also a very classical application. Then there's housing. We talked about the census since two thousand. For the first time, housing is in our country has become the health of private families. Since family have private health, it is first represented by housing.、Mm. So we know that the census after two thousand, the information of small census housing is very rich. You can see we can see the information about the census to study all kinds of housing problems. So here we can also see what I have just said: why census、uh, delta and sample survey delta can be used together. You can see that the assumption that if Uh, this census delta. Suppose we are,、uh, we have a sample de delta. 
you can uh we can uh come a it can look uh, people live under a, a certain population density uh what is the marriage rate of people and what is the uh form of uh the, the certain uh, fertility pattern living in the social environment of a common community we can see the impact of individual demographic demographic characteristics on people's housing and other behavior that is a good example for us to use the census you you see we can also see the census to do a very good study of marriage here xie yu and uh, mu zhen did this study which is very interesting uh from that is to say from the liberation of our country to the present our marriage uh the the matching pattern between marriage men and women is the age right uh, is the age so you can take a look at it the article here is based on age matching as an indicator you can see since 1940s for both men and women you can see the age difference between men and women in, and the proportion of homogeneous marriage is also a very high is also also very high by 1970s uh and in also in the late 1960s or mid 1970s the age of um, population was basically the same both men and women were in the upward structure uh but in recent years the new birth cohort as you can see showed a downward trend in eating meetings that is also to say we can see that before the reform and opening up our society has a strong sense of smoothity and people pay attention to being well uh, matched this kind of marriage is called a very good but after the reform and opening up the society is more diversified and the more choices to participate in the marriage uh, match so the age uh, gap is getting bigger and bigger the proportion of homogeneous marriage is gradually declining so using the census to study such marriage problem is a very good delta is a very good example uh we can also study the issue of fertility china's census is different from the other countries in terms of fertility and death uh these two information are unique to us we collected very detailed information like professor cai yong He used the China's 10-year census to make an estimate of China's fertility level because of the this rate of return our country is now uh relatively low only a little bit 1.5 or so the average couple has only 1.5 children but every time our census comes out it basically 1.5 uh 21 which is very low sometimes people cannot accept whether this reality is true or not uh they just accept this reality and has happened in recent years uh, dr tai yong used this census data to compare the revision of the data published in the statistical yearbook every year to judge our fertility level uh whether it is democratic uh age delta or our census delta you can see our upgrading level in need uh, de- uh, declining declining very fast and it is a very low level then we have also carried out research on sexual sex ratio at birth the sex ratio at birth in this country is also relatively high and it has declined in recent years this is is the study i with proof uh we can see that we used the delta of a small delta in two census we also we all found that the sex ratio at birth in china has such pattern that is to say the higher the social status is the lower culture and social status is but with the development of social status it belongs to the rising stage then with the further improvement of social status the sex ratio at birth will decline more and more 
uh, Pearly U Rape, which is just a, posi a positive to India, which is a lenient growth model. So we say that China's society, the sex ratio, you don't have to worry about about it too much with the develop with the development of society and improvement people's living standards. The problem of sex ratio will gradually decrease. In the recent years, you can you see although our sex ratio is relatively high, it has much more lower than the past ten years. Also, although some research has also attributed to the results of adjustments of family planning policy, this is also one. But we say that social development is also a major factor. Then we say there's another use of census data. Uh, the last point I'd like to say it can do for sample survey. You can see that we have two pyramids of population age structure. The picture on the right is the projection of our Peking University family tracking survey. You can see our project only attracted three hundred and thirty-seven thousand people. After we made the delta, uh, eleven years later, we got the delta of census in twenty ten, like one point three billion people. After we made the population age period, we found that you may feel, uh, you may feel the same as me. It's almost the same after you see it, right? So the reason why we see it is relatively the same. Means that we judge the quality collapse delta. The reason why it is good, uh, is that we we have census delta for so for reference and comparison. So we say that the quality of C CF delta is good. But often when we do sampling survey, the quality of sampling like CFO is not much. So we need to use census delta to weight the delta after event. Only in this way we can ensure our descriptive、uh, statistics and democrat and demographic characteristics. The information obtained from sample survey can reflect the basic characteristics characteristics of population of the whole country. So we say that the census delta can be a very good population after、uh, the sampling survey. Okay, thank you very much, Mr. Zhen, for inviting us to,、uh, to give us an introduction to the history of census, and then launching various、uh, research methods, and then bring you to understand the role of census. And I believe that you will get a lot of ins、uh, inspiration. If you want to have further communication with Mr. Zhen, you can also record your. Uh, questions or comments, and wait for a while. And that after the secondary falls.、Uh, so our next speaker today is Yang Xiaowei, the project manager of Xinkai Overseas Product Center. Uh, his she's responsible for the development of construction of China's economic and social del big delta research platform, the international version of China uh, Delta uh, Insight, and ha has a medical and math medical background. We also accumulate. He also, she also communicated accumulated a rich experience in Delta analysis in the in the industry and has cooperated with China's statistics department and began to collect Delta of China's national census for many years.、Um, The topic of her lecture is the introduction and application of China's census、uh, Delta. Welcome. I'm very glad to have such an opportunity to communicate with you.、Uh, after I listened to Mr. Zhen's sharing, I have a deep understanding of the application of census delta. I'm going to share with you our separate、uh, census delta. I will introduce it from three aspects: the academic value of census delta, the content and function of the、uh, academic delta. First. Uh, let us take a look at the value of census delta. Mr. Zhen mentioned a lot. I will briefly 
mentioned that、uh, census is the most、uh, basic method of、uh, collecting population data, widely used in today. It is mainly、uh, pro providing basic. Population data for the whole country. The census work mainly includes the whole process of collecting census census data, data, collecting data, evaluation, analyzing, editing, and publishing.、Uh, China has conducted seven in national population census in 1953, 1964, 1982, 1990, 2000. Twenty ten, twenty twenty. There were real responses of the. Society supporting the formulation of national policies, the allocating the funds to local area, and planning of public and private, uh, and uh, volu voluntary sectors. Let's look at. Uh, this is the summary of census data as important academic reference based on international perspective. The first picture is that we. Uh, counted the census data as an、uh, important census thinking. The second is the distribution of such discipline with census data as a reference for.、Uh, we see that the, the enthusiasm of international scholars to use China census data for the research is lasting from twenty fifteen to two thousand. Uh, in the scientific research output of international scholars, census data can support a wide range of discipline.、Uh, international scholars used Chinese census data to study more in the field of public health and occupational health.、Uh, I will give you some examples. The articles on the left uses census data to study the classification system and health characteristics of floating、uh, population in China, showing that、uh, popul political and economic policies. The article on the right uses two thousand five census data to chi to study China's、uh, immigration and registration in、uh, in the places of origin. In the next two articles, the、uh, articles on the left is based on the census data in two thousand, which investigates the enrollment and graduation of young people aged from ten to eighteen in Western China, analyzes them at regional, provincial, and、uh, individual level. The article on the right uses China's census data to analyze the profound and com. Complex impact of a ban on sex selection. In November twenty nineteen, the State Council issued a notice on the seventh National Population Census, which will be carried out from twenty twenty in accordance with the provision of the statistical law of People's Republic of, People's Republic of China. The work. Is mainly divided into three stages. The first is the preparation stage. The second is the census registration stage. The third is the data collection and re release stage, which is now we are now. The main work, uh, is to, uh, carry out uh data processing, summarize, evaluation. The seventh census data has attracted such a high degree of attention from global research think tank in Japan, Poland, Singapore,、uh, Sweden, and other countries. How to finish、uh, talking about the significance of such、uh, census? I will introduce the contents of China's census data. The popu China population census data is a full test delta database and sensor database. A system based on previous census data of the Chinese government statistical department. At present, our database, abbreviated as、uh, CPP, contains one hundred fifty-two kinds of census data, in totaling three hundred twenty-nine volumes and forty-one thousand six hundred forty-eight entries. On the seventh census data. Uh, we continue to display our delta. On the right, I count the delta of the fourth, fifth, and sixth times of our current income. We can see the fourth line included fifty-one kinds of eighty-three、uh, volumes. The fifth time included thirty-eight kinds of volumes. 
Next, I will give you a brief explanation of the income situation of our database based on the six consensus. Let us take a look at our national census data. We have collected the main delta of the six population census, including the delta of China's 2010 population census, the delta of China's population census line, township, uh, town street, and the handbook of the six national population census. Uh, from the perspective of provincial delta, we have collected a total of 32 kinds of 100 layers, including all the delta of 31 provinces, autonomous region, municipalities directly under the central government and Xinjiang corporations. Uh, the last part is our city and country census. Our sixth consensus includes 24 uh, kinds, totaling 30 volumes. Meanwhile, we also include some uh, delta base, such as uh, Bo Boan district in Shenzhen. Uh, take the first volume of China's 2010 census as an example. It mainly divided into eight parts. The first part is all the delta followed by the Summary of nationality, age, education level, family death, uh, household registration status, housing. If you we look uh, click the the second part of the ethnic group to show the specific contents of the, the volume. The population of all ethnic groups in our country. You can have a detailed page of the entry. Through this page, you can download the original PDF and the processed Excel uh, tab table. You can also download it here to make a comparison with them. The following picture is an Excel processing. We will carry out a fine processing and processing of the Excel uh, table and provide you with the such download. This provision of the table will facilitate our users to carry out a delta statistics and processing. The table is uh, available on our platform. In the third part, let's look at such a specific function of a product. I will use some uh, specific examples First, the function of our product includes three mm, modules, namely delta retrieval, delta analysis, and the whole journal reading. Let's look at our delta retrieval uh, and also our delta indicator. It mainly includes the summary, gender, age, martial status, which are different from our other statistical delta. Meanwhile, we will translate each entry and establish such a multi-dimensional index uh, delta and analyze the system. We search here in this indicator. Uh, it also includes housing. You can see that uh, we we can also see the situation of such housing index in all Beijing area. This is our item retrieval. I will give you an example. We will uh, of housing after we input it, we get a such result that all and. The entries contain the world. It can classify it by region, by year, by different source of census delta. Meanwhile, we can also carry out a fine uh, screening according to our region. I will give you an example here. We put input such uh, population after we click the, the search, we get all the search C 
Similarly, we click on each uh, path and we can, I can, I, I download the PDF Excel to compare them. This picture is the result of our original test. This table is the result of processing. Then provides a download and a delta of such download sheet. Last is our indicator interpretation modules. We can get specific explanation of indicator from some professional statistics. Uh, the function of the second part is mainly the module of delta an analysis. We can see that our indicators are established according to the statist uh, to the characteristics of our census delta. I can give you example here. After clicking on the analysis, we can get an analysis a chart like this, and our delta chart is generated. Meanwhile, the search uh, result is on the top right, and we can download the delta. The last function we just mentioned refers um, to uh, it can provide a reference to the original division of general book. We can enter different pages through the directory on the left side of 2010. Download PDF and Excel table. Finally, let's make a brief summary of, our, of the database. Through our China Census database, we can browse and search uh, Center Delta, read original book, look for statistical reports, customerize regional indicators to assist the development of the comparison of, of region. All of the delta is electronically refined, which supports the download of table and support research in different disciplines. Uh, we found the top 10 research results, uh, tuberculosis, population research, urbanization, aging, cancer incidence, trends, etc. And this study will further promote innovation. I hope China Census database will bring more help to all of you. That is my sharing. Thank you very much. Uh, you can talk to me anytime. Thank you.